Did you know that low carbohydrate diet can reverse type 2 diabetes and improve cardiovascular health and quality of life? If this is something which you're interested in, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. My name is Dr. Zulkanayan Ahmed, I'm a GP in Bolton and I make videos about health and self-growth. And like I explained in my previous video, that type 2 diabetes can be reversed by lifestyle changes. If you're not watched that video, please click on this link here where you can watch this after this video. So this approach is not new. It was initially developed by Dr. David Unwin, who's a GP based in Southport a few years ago. I believe he's recently retired. Dr. David Unwin did his own study which lasted for six years and over the course of six years he tracked the progress of individuals in his UK practice who has been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes or, or pre-diabetes. For those who chose low carbohydrate diet to treat the condition, Dr. David Unwin and his team found significant improvement in blood sugar control, weight, blood pressure and other health markers. In this self-selected group of 199 participants, 93% of those with pre-diabetes were able to return to normal HbA1c level, which means that they were able to reverse their pre-diabetes into normal, while 46% of those with type 2 diabetes were able to discontinue, discontinue medication, other markers of good health also significantly improved in the patient group with an average weight loss of about 8.1 kilos which is roughly about 18 pounds plus significant improvement in blood cholesterol triglyceride which is the bad cholesterol and blood pressure this study estimated that a low carbohydrate diet saved over 50,000 pounds in drug costs compared to 17 other similar size practices here in the UK. This study suggested that every general practice in England, if they were to have the similar savings than annual savings to NHS, would be £277 million per year. These are astounding numbers. And the main approach which he used in this study was, as we said before, was low carbohydrate diet. So what is actually low carbohydrate diet? Low carbohydrate diet is when you reduce the total amount of carbohydrates you consume in a day to less than 130 grams. So to put this into context, a medium sized slice of bread is about 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates, which is about the same as, an, as a regular apple. Or on the other hand, a large jacket potato could have as much as 90 grams of carbohydrates as does one liter of orange juice. So the first thing to remember is that you have to reduce starchy carbohydrates a lot. Remember that starch is just concentrated form of sugar. If possible, cut out the white stuff like bread, pasta, rice, though porridge, new potatoes, and oat cakes in moderation may be fine. Number two, cut out sugar altogether. I'm sorry, it's not possible to cure diabetes without doing this, I'm afraid. Although sugar in some fruits, for example, blueberries and strawberries and raspberries is absolutely fine. Cakes and biscuits are a mixture of sugar and starch that make it almost impossible to avoid food cravings. They just make you hungrier. So cut them out as well. All vegetables and salads are fine. Eat as much as you can so that you're not hungry. And vegetables such as broccoli, courgettes, or green beans, they're all absolutely fine and good for you. And my, one of my tips here would be to cook at home um, and also you might want to try making some soup at home which you can take it to work for lunch and just warm it up in the microwave and use it. Mushrooms, tomatoes and onion can also be included in the soup as well. Now fruit is a bit trickier. 
some tropical fruits like bananas, oranges, grapes, mangoes or pineapple have too much sugar in them so it can be a bit problematic and they can cause you to have cravings but other fruits like berries they are a bit better in addition to that blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, apple and pears they're fine to eat. So the next point is eat healthy proteins such as non-processed meat, eggs, fish, particularly oily fish such as salmon, mackerel and tuna are fine and can easily be eaten freely. Plain full fat yogurt makes a good breakfast with some berries. Processed meat such as bacon, ham, sausages, salami are not healthy and should only be eaten in small amounts. Healthy fats are fine in moderation. Yes, you heard that right. Fats are absolutely fine in moderation. Olive oil is very useful. It's good for you as well. Coconut oil is great for stir fries. Four essential vitamins A, B, E and K are only found in some fats or, uh, fats or oils. So you probably, if you start eating them, you'd probably be getting them as well. Please avoid margarine, corn oil, vegetable oil and beware of low risk fat foods that often have sugar or sweetener added to make them palatable and full fat mayonnaise or pesto are definitely okay. Cheese only in moderation though because it's a very calorific mixture of fat and protein. Avoid snacks as they can be habit forming but unsalted nuts such as almonds and walnuts are okay to have in small amounts uh, as an occasional treat. Uh, you can also use strong dark chocolate 70% or more in small quantity also. Eating lots of vegetables with protein and healthy fats leaves you properly full. And finally about sweeteners and what to drink. Sweeteners have been proven to tease your brain into being even hungrier, making your weight loss much more difficult. Instead, drink tea, coffee, water, herbal teas. I'm afraid most alcoholic drinks are full of carbohydrates. For example, beer is almost liquid toast, hence the phrase beer belly. The odd glass of red wine is not too bad if, it's, if it doesn't make you hungry afterwards. I just plain water with a slice of lemon might be your best alternative. In addition to these dietary changes, we also know that movements are good for us. So walking 10,000 steps a day and breaking your sitting by getting up every hour can also help a great deal. You don't have to start with 10,000. You can just start with 10 to 20 minutes of walking two to three times a week if you're a beginner. In addition to that, you can also add some strength training twice a week for 5 to 10 minutes and 5 to 10 minutes of HIIT training twice a week as well. If you want to learn more about that, click on this video here where I talk much more in detail about that. And if you are a regular gym goer, then consider swimming, a yoga, a tai chi and make sure you do 5 minutes of deep breathing before you go to bed, which will help you sleep better. If you're still watching, make sure you subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends and family and let me know in the comments below what works for you. Thank you very much for watching and until the next video, may peace be upon you. Bye.